Okay, hello and welcome to the 2023 Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program Recruiter Training. We're going to teach you today how to recruit participants for SFMNP. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so just a little bit of history on the Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program. Uh, this is a federal program and it was uh, started in 2001. Um, and it's important to note that each state actually must apply for funding. So Oklahoma chose to start uh, participating in SFMNP in 2009. Um, each state is allotted a very specific amount of money um, where participants uh, will receive $50 in benefits for each market season. Um, so if we want to increase our funds, it's important that we actually have to hit over 80% utilization rate. So of the money, um, that is distributed to our seniors, at least 80% has to be utilized before a state is able to request more funds. So a little bit of history for Oklahoma. Here uh, in 2021, we had about a 60% utilization rate. Um, but in 2022, this last year, we actually uh, thank you to all of our recruiters that participated, market managers, and our participants. We were able to achieve over an 80% utilization rate. Uh, therefore, we were able to apply and ask for more funding. So due to that, uh, we increased our funding from somewhere around $75,000. Now we've increased that to $175,000 uh, to distribute here in 2023. Um, so we're able to serve quite a few more seniors. So last year we were able to serve 1,800 seniors. Uh, in 2023, our new goal is to reach 3,500 seniors. So we have a lofty new goal that I am very confident that we can meet. Um, so those of you that are familiar with the program, you can see on your screen, this is what the Senior Farmers Market card looks like that is sent to our seniors that they will receive in the mail. It is green and it has a picture of broccoli and the Senior Farmers Market logo. Um, if something happens and our senior loses the card, it is possible to request a new replacement card. However, please note uh, the new card that they would get in the mail will actually have a picture of strawberries on it. So if you're seeing different cards out there, it's not because they are uh, incorrect or there's multiple versions. That senior uh, card with the strawberries just means it is a replacement card. Okay, so let's go through the senior farmer's market process, how uh, this all works. So in order for a senior to apply to participate, there are a few income guidelines that they must meet. Uh, so first of all, income must be at or below 185% of the federal poverty line. Seniors must uh, be 60 or older, or they can be 55 and older if they are native. Uh, we also have uh, participating markets that are within 30 miles of where the senior lives. So it's important to note too, they must live close to a farmer's market that does accept uh, program benefits um, in order to participate. So once our senior is approved, they will be mailed their EBT card like you just saw in the previous slide. Um, and that card is preloaded with $50 of benefits and it must be used within the market season. So whenever they receive their card, they will be able to use that $50 between then and then October 31st, 2023. So it's again, it's really important to make sure that our seniors know that their benefits do expire by the end of the market season. Um, Seniors complete an application um, that will actually open on March 15th this year. Um, and again, those $50 cards will be mailed. Uh, we're expecting sometime by mid-May. So it's really important as a recruiter to, when you're working with your seniors, to let them know, don't worry, you're not going to receive a card immediately. They should receive it sometime by mid-May. I know that we get a lot of questions about that and seniors can get nervous if they don't see their card pretty quickly afterwards. So just know, um, that they will receive those cards, but we're expecting sometime around mid-May. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what they can expect on market day and how they redeem those benefits. So the picture you see on the right side of your screen, that is a token guide. Um, these should be available at the markets, and these are really helpful to remind our participants what they are able to purchase with their benefits. So things that they can buy with their senior tokens, they can buy Oklahoma-grown fruits, Oklahoma grown vegetables, fresh cut herbs, and raw honey. So each of our different programs are have different eligible items. So these are the items that are available for our seniors to purchase with their $50 that is preloaded on their EVP cards. Okay, so how it works when a senior does arrive, 
I know sometimes there can be some nerves if we have new seniors that have never participated before. So it's important as a recruiter to understand this process and make sure uh, to go over it with them in case they have any questions so they feel comfortable shopping at their market. Uh, seniors will uh, use their debit uh, EBT card, so they will actually take that to the market manager table. Um, if they're familiar with the SNAP process, it's quite similar, um, but they will be using their senior farmer's market card. So they take that card to the market manageable table, market, excuse me, manager table, and they will swipe that. So once that market manager swipes their card, uh, they'll ask the senior how much they'd like to redeem. So let's say they want to redeem $20 worth of tokens. Um, they're able to do that and they receive those tokens. So the senior will have a pin on their card. It is a four digit pin. Um, the cards currently have a default pin of 1111. So it's important to make sure uh, if the senior can't remember their pin, it's likely unless they changed it to be 1111. Uh, something that's new this year, there is some concern about fraud and increasing uh, safety measures to make sure that there is no fraud with this program. So currently all preloaded pins are, um, again, the 1111. However, uh, there may be some communication that you might receive later this market season um, asking uh, seniors to uh, change those pins to make sure that they are unique to each user. Um, again, we don't have any guidance on it at the time of this training. However, if we do have uh, different instructions at some point during the market season, you will receive an email um, from us, either from DHS or from the ONI project, making sure that you understand what the new guidelines are. So just a quick note on that. Uh, so once the senior um, has swiped their card, they will be given tokens for the amount swiped. So again, let's say that amount is $20, they would receive $21 tokens. Um, eligible vendors would be identified with a sign. So it's important to let seniors know they would see a sign with that Senior Farmers Market Nutrition Program logo. Um, on their booth, knowing that they accept those benefits. Uh, so seniors are able to select eligible food items. Again, uh, fruits and vegetables grown in Oklahoma, cut herbs or raw honey with those tokens. Um, another interesting thing that's important to note, um, they will fill the order to the nearest dollar amount. So senior tokens are exactly $1 and it is not possible to round up or down, or excuse me, it's not possible to make change with those tokens. Therefore, uh, if they have a, um, you know, a purchase that is $5.50, likely the farmer would round up to $6 and they may add like another tomato or something to go up to that dollar amount. Um, because again, change is not able to be made for the program. So here at ONI, we were able to do um, some research and we surveyed our program participants. And so what we found was really interesting and we wanted to share it with you. So I think one of the key things that we found from our surveys with our participants is 99% of our participants would recommend the program, meaning they were very satisfied with their participation in the program. They saw it as valuable. Um, and so I think that's a real key take home message is to know that our seniors are happy with the program. Um, and here are a few reasons why. So these are five main themes that came out when we looked at why they'd recommend it. So, um, each of these quotes kind of illustrate that. So first off, uh, the quality of food. Our seniors really do see the quality that they are able to get at their local farmer's market. So I like the fresh fruits and vegetables and they are much better quality. They enjoy the social aspects of the markets. Um, the next one is it extends their food budget. So yes, this program does provide $50 for a market season, but that $50 goes a long way for them. They do see the value of it extending their food budget. Um, so they uh, just really appreciate the fresh fruits and vegetables, and it helps their food budget stretch a little further. Um, they're healthier because they do have those fruits and vegetables. Uh, next one is improved nutrition and diet. So they see it valuable uh, at actually improving the quality of their diet um, because it's eating healthy. Without it, we don't get the necessary nutrition that elderly people deserve. Uh, the next one is they really find it uh, valuable that the friendly people that they interact with at the market. They love going to the market as a social um, event. So they love talking to the market managers, the vendors, um, and other community members. So it is fresh and it's good. And the people that bring the food are so nice. They're just good people. And I think we should do everything we can, you know, to keep it going. 
Um, and then the last reason that they mentioned was supporting local. They find it important to support their local farmers and producers. So I think it's excellent for healthy vegetables and food and supporting local farmers around Oklahoma. So these are some reasons why our seniors find the program valuable. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how we recruit our seniors for this program. Um, this is really important as you all are the market manager, or excuse me, you guys are the recruiters. So I think that's important to know. There are three different ways um, that you are able to recruit participants. So another thing to know, each county will be assigned a specific number of applications. We get a lot of questions on how this is determined. It's determined based on need as well as utilization. So when that we say need, that means uh, population-wise. So how many people are actually living in the county? And then we also look at utilization rate uh, from previous years. Um, so we do the best that we can to make it as fair as possible as far as applications go. Uh, but for whatever reason, if you are uh, filling up your number, you can also start a wait list. So that way we can reallocate numbers um, for applications that are not used in other places. Uh, so the three ways that a senior can sign up. First of all, if you look at that um, flyer on the right hand side, these are mailed to people that live within an area that may be eligible um, by their farmer's market. So the senior themselves can receive a link to complete the online application. And you can see that QR code in that bottom right corner of the uh, flyer there. And they also see the web link down in the bottom. So the senior themselves can fill it out. Um, you as the recruiter at a recruitment event could pull up the link um, and have help the senior fill it out. Um, but ultimately that uh, senior is filling out that application live at that recruitment event. Um, and then the third way is you as the recruiter could pull up the link and complete the application on behalf of the senior as a proxy for that senior. So there's, again, three different ways um, that that can happen. Uh, one thing that we ask for uh, you all as recruiters to do, we ask that you hold at least one recruitment event each season. You, of course, can uh, hold more if you prefer or if that works out um, in order to fill your number of applications. But we ask that you hold at least one. Um, another thing that we would like you to do is if you could send us the event information as early as possible, uh, if we receive it in time before these flyers are printed, we would actually include your event information on the flyers that are mailed out to your seniors and to your waitlist seniors. So uh, as soon as you know your recruitment event information, if you can send that to the contact people at the end of this presentation, uh, Diana, Meredith, or Krisha, um, that would be really helpful um, and we can get that information printed on your flyers, hopefully. Okay, so now we're gonna watch a quick video. I just want you all to see what it looks like as you as a recruiter on the back end of the website, what you all would see and what that would look like. So let's go ahead and watch this and I'll narrate for you. Okay, so again, this is what your dashboard would look like when you are signing in here. Um, you can kind of see um, over here, you could see what your name, um, you would actually see, uh, you could view all submissions, you'd actually have your account information, um, and it would also show you the status of your trainings if you've completed those or not. So first off, uh, we're going to click here on the view all submissions, I believe. Just one second, there we go, view all submissions. Okay. Oh, just kidding. We are going to look at the back end, and this is showing all of your different data. Um, so you can kind of see this is not something that a senior would see, but this is actually going to see all of your different submission statuses. So it'll show you how many applications you have in each, um, how many applications you have in total. And then I'll actually go through each of your submissions and tell you what that status is. So you can see status here. Um, you can also see participants' names, date of birth. And then um, as you can tell here, this example is for Oklahoma County. So whatever your county would be, um, it would be listed there. You also have the ability to view, edit, or delete submissions as well. Um, so those are also options for you. Okay, I'll wait till we go to the next slide or the next part of the video. Okay, so it looks like we're going to create a submission. Hopefully soon. Okay. 
So if you're going to create a submission, this is a little bit different than what a senior would see, but it, for your view as a recruiter, it's just a streamlined application for them. So again, you'll see you would need their first and last name, middle initial, date of birth, um, and the last four digits of their social security number. Um, email is not required, but encouraged if the senior has one. Um, again, we would be asking for the qualifying questions such as, are they uh, receiving SNAP, household income, and size? Um, a phone number is required at this time, so it's important to put that there. Um, and we would like to know how they were referred to the program, um, and that you would also see the ethnicities, and they're able to pick those just like they would on their application. Uh, we do need address information where they live. Uh, if they have an authorized representative, they would include that. Um, and it's important to read, read those terms and conditions to them, make sure that they understand that. Um, and once that's done, then you would hit create submission or create and add another. So in the video, again, we're going to cancel here. Um, kind of like we went over before, you can actually view it. So once the senior would uh, submit their application, you would see this screen. And this really is just a review. It's just kind of a summary of what was submitted on their application. So that's pretty much that all that we would show on that video. But again, this is just what you would see as a recruiter on the back end from your side. But it is very similar to what our seniors would see when it comes to the application side. So just make sure that you're familiar with this form. Um, so that way you can answer all questions for our seniors as they're applying. Okay, so the next thing I want to go over, um, again, don't forget um, the different requirements for the seniors. Again, they must be an Oklahoma resident, uh, 60 years or older, or 55 and older if they are Native American. I um, mean, they must meet the income guidelines, which you can see on the slide right there. Um, on the left-hand side of the slide, you can see recruitment brochures. These are available to you as uh, re program recruiters. So please contact ONI team members. Again, Meredith and Deanna's contacts are at the end of this presentation. So uh, we encourage you to contact them and order copies of these brochures. You can take these to your recruitment events. You can hand them out to your seniors. Um, and it really just explains what the program is, how to sign up, um, and what those eligibility requirements are. So those are free to you, um, and we'll get those out to you. Um, here on this screen, you can actually see what the postcards that are sent out to the seniors look like. So this postcard will be mailed uh, to all past participants, as well as those on the wait list. Um, so if you have a list of seniors that are on a wait list, please, please, if you could send those to the ONI team as soon as possible. We want to make sure and get uh, uh, postcards to all of our seniors that participated, as well as the wait list. Because like I mentioned before, we're almost doubling our number of uh, availability of serving our seniors from 1,800 to 3,500 seniors statewide. Um, so we really want to make sure and contact our waitlist seniors as well. Um, okay, so that's a sample of what it would look like. Uh, we also would mail a second postcard to them, and this is to remind them um, to apply uh, for that program. Again, you can see that QR code there that would take them directly to the application, um, and just a reminder for them to um, apply. Um, another thing I'd like to share with you, you can see on this screen, you can actually see sample posts. Um, these are actual screenshots um, that were things that were posted on the ONI Project Facebook page, as well as Instagram. Um, so not only will we be sharing these on our social media, we also will have these uh, pictures and copy uploaded to our uh, website uh, for you all to download and you can uh, share on your social media pages as well. So these are um, tools for you to use for recruitment. Uh, one thing that's very important to note, we want to make sure and treat everyone respectfully, um, both our participants and we ask that our participants treat our recruiters, our market managers, and all the vendors with respect as well. So USDA provide, uh, excuse me, prohibits discrimination based on race, color, national origin, sex, disability, age, or reprisal or retaliation for prior civil rights activity in uh, at a program or activity conducted or funded by USDA. Um, allegations of discrimination or other violation of civil rights will be made to DHS. Uh, the Civil Rights Administrator handle, handles these grievances. Um, if you have any issues, um, it's important to provide this disclaimer if we have any complaints that we report them. 
and the contact information is there below on that slide. Um, another thing that we want to mention is concerns related to seniors. So markets and farmers should report any attempts of program abuse by participants. Um, so things like trying to sell or exchange food purchase with tokens, uh, requesting cash for EBT cards um, or food purchase with the EBT cards, uh, using an empty EBT card. But it is important to note, sometimes our participants forget that they might have already used all of their benefits on the card. So it's important to kind of check and see, um, are they intentionally trying to use a card that has no benefits on it, or did they just forget or possibly maybe use last year's card? So ask questions before making a report, um, but it is important if you do feel like it is, um, um, that it is abuse that you report that. Um, the other things are trying to force farmers to sell foods that are not the Oklahoma grown fruits and vegetables, um, fresh cut herbs and raw honey, um, or being abusive towards market employees. Um, all complaints will be handled by DHS, Adult and Family Services. Uh, that contact is at the end of this presentation. Uh, you would contact Krisha. Um, and please provide the senior's name and if appropriate, the name and description um, of the proxy or shop for attempting program abuse. So just making sure to collect the necessary information when you're reporting those abuse claims. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, we have a few different contact uh, people here. So for the ONI project, you would either contact Diana or Meredith. And if you have questions related uh, at OKDHS, you would contact Krisha. So you can see phone numbers and emails. Uh, one thing to note, um, when your seniors do have questions, um, if at all possible, if you can answer their questions as their recruiter, I believe that you all would be their first line um, of support, making sure that you can answer all the questions. Um, if it's a question that you cannot answer, then you could provide those seniors um, one of the contact information um, that you see here on this slide. So uh, thank you so much for, again, watching this 2023 uh, recruiter senior farmers market nutrition program video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and have a lovely day.